Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Not too long ago, I showed you a 500 watt lithium iron phosphate portable power station. And in this video, we're going to be testing out this larger lithium iron phosphate portable power station made by Alpus. This unit is designed to supply up to 1000 watts continuously and 1100 watts for three minutes. Peak power for surge is 1500 watts. We're going to be testing out those ratings to make sure they're accurate. Inside this unit, you have a 32 volt lithium iron phosphate battery pack that is rated just under 1000 watt hours. According to the manufacturer, you can cycle the battery in this unit 3,600 times. Of course, we're not going to be able to check that out because it would take a very long time to verify if that's accurate. We're just going to be checking out the power ratings for the AC receptacle, the ports over here, type A, type C, as well as these DC jacks and the 12 volt accessory socket. Right over here you can see the product specifications. The weight of this portable power station is 24.2 pounds or 11 kilograms. This Alpus portable power station was supplied to me by the company, but that does not mean you're going to be getting a biased review. Good or bad, you're going to hear it all. The first thing I want to do is just give you a quick look at the unit. It appears to be made out of ABS, and as you can see, it has a little bit of that jackery color scheme going on. Over here is a rubberized material that wraps around the unit. The bottom has four feet. That's just like this, the same material. Over here, you can see there's three receptacles, pure sine wave. We're going to be checking it out to make sure that it is. The output is 110 volts up to 1100 watts. Right over here is the power button that you would push and hold. We'll do that in a minute. Here's your input. This unit you can charge using up to 200 watts using solar panels, your car, or the included AC adapter that you can see right here. The unit takes between five and six hours to charge when the battery has been fully depleted. And when this is fully depleted, you will see at least 200 watts going into the unit. Once the charge of the unit has been brought up from a depleted state, it'll level off around 180 watts. Also included is this cord. You could plug this into the accessory socket of your vehicle. The third way you can charge it is by using two 100 watt 12 volt solar panels in parallel. Over here you have two USB type A ports, two USB type C power delivery, then you have two jacks. Each one is rated up to 10 amps. And over here you have an accessory socket. We're going to be checking all these out to make sure they're able to deliver what the manufacturer states. As you can see, the unit has a very large liquid crystal display. At the top, you have a very comfortable handle grip. Over here, you can see the opening for the cooling fans. There are two of them behind here, and they are extremely quiet. On the rear side, there's a very large LED light panel. Push right over here. One click is the low setting. That's a higher setting, and it's pretty bright. You might not see it on the camera, but it is pretty bright. The third setting is SOS. And you just push to turn it off. Pretty useful to have, especially if you're going to have this inside of a tent. It will light up the entire area. And on this side, you got the same opening that's going to allow the air to flow through the unit. Okay, let's power it up by pushing and holding for about four seconds. Right here you can see 100%, the battery's fully charged, 99 hours. And over here is where your input wattage would be if you're charging. And up here is your output wattage if you're using the AC or DC sections. Just like the other power stations, just push the button. And you can see there's a fan turning. Over here is your indication that the receptacles are active, shows a sine wave with AC. Over here, push this button, DC section is on, car receptacle up here, DC outputs USB type A and C. Alright, so the first thing I want to do, let's take a look at the power output of these receptacles. Let's measure the output voltage, put one there. 114.8, and these all should be in parallel. Yeah, pretty much. That's good. Now let's take a look at the frequency output. 
59.94, so that's pretty good. Now let's take a look at the waveform for the AC output. And as you can see, there's a sine wave waveform. Carefully push measure. And I can put this button over here. Right down here it says RMS 120 volts. And it says voltage peak right over here at 176. And the frequency fluctuating between 59.95 and 60.09. Now let's place a load on the portable power station and look at the output one more time. The load I'll be using is this 300 watt heat gun. I'm going to turn it on. Keep an eye on the waveform. And it seems just fine. The next thing I'm going to do is test out the DC section. Make sure everything is working fine. Once that's finished, we'll take the portable power station outdoors and continue with the AC testing. Keep an eye on the meter. I'm going to reach straight in and to the side. So 12.83. Okay. I'm going to connect up a load tester now. We're going to place 10 amps on this receptacle for about a half an hour just to make sure there's no overheating and that the unit can supply 10 amps. I now have the electronic load tester connected to the DC accessory socket and the current setting is 10 amps. Over here is the voltage of the DC socket. I'm going to let this sit for 30 minutes, come right back. Okay guys, total success. Not a problem at all supplying 10 amps from that accessory socket. So the next thing I want to do is pop this out and we're going to put a 10 amp load on one of these jacks and repeat the test. Here we go. All right, another success. And just to let you know, while the load was connected, I measured the voltage of the other DC jack, and it was 12.7 volts. First thing I want to do is make sure that each one of these ports at the top, the Type C's, can supply up to 3 amps. Plug that in. Hopefully, you can see that. I set for 3 amps, 2.93. Voltage is 4.9. Turn it on. There's your wattage over there. Let's see what the voltage is. 4.5. So, all right, that's pretty good. Anything above 4.4 is okay. Now, let's go over to this one. 2.9, slightly higher voltage in that one at 5.1, Let's power it up. Same thing for this one, 4.5, 3 amps, no problem. Now let's take a look at these two over here at the bottom, the USB Type A. And hopefully that's clear on the camera. We're set for 2.5 amps. And this port is designed to deliver between 1.5 and 3 amps depending on the voltage output. So if this was set for 12 volts, you'd be getting around 1.5 amps. And if you're setting it for 5 volts, it would be 3 amps. So I have it set at 2.5. Voltage is 5.2. Let's move over a little bit and turn this back on. Let's power it up. Four point six, so that's fine. And I'm sure there's a voltage drop, like I said, across this thinner wire. So let's go over here. Increases to two point seven five. It's gonna weigh down the the voltage. 
4.5, still pretty good. Let's push it to 3, 4, 3.9. So 3 amps is not looking good. 2.75 is not a problem. Let's check this one as well. Yep, 4.5. Alright, so 2 and 3 quarter amps. Now I have four different things connected to the USB port. I have an iPad. I have this load tester set to 2.6 amps. I have this one right here. Another load tester at 2 amps. And I have my Samsung phone. Let's wait and see how well it holds up. Okay, 30 minutes passed and everything is fine. It just started dropping off from 70 a few minutes ago. So everything there working pretty good. Later on, when the voltage drops way down to around 15%, after I do the testing on the receptacles, we're going to measure the voltage here one more time and place a load on it. The next thing I want to do is take a quick look at the minimum voltage and maximum voltage for charging this power station. So 12 volts is not doing much. Let's go up to 12.6, just like a car battery, 12.62. Okay, pretty good. So 12.63, it's showing 7.33 amps, 92 watts. So very close. All right, now let's increase the voltage and see what effect it has on the wattage going into the unit. So right now it's 12.65. Let's go to 14. So right here we are at 14.02. And I'm showing 102.6, 102. Now let's go higher towards a solar panel voltage, 18 to 21. Let's go 18. Okay, that's 18 volts. So 18 volts, we're showing 131 watts, 7.3 amps. Let's go to 21. Twenty-one. So at twenty-one volts, we're at a hundred and fifty-five watts. Seven point three three amps. So the current is staying about the same, the voltage is going higher, increasing the wattage. If you're using one solar panel, which is a 12 volt panel, the open circuit voltage is between 18 and a half and 21. When you connect a load, the voltage is going to drop. So I do not see how you're going to get 200 watts using two 12 volt solar panels in parallel. Let's go a little higher now. Let's go to 24 volts. That's what the switch mode power supply is that comes with the unit. Let's go 24. Okay, so 24, we're very close to 180, it's 178, 179, we're there, there it is, 180. Let's increase towards 30. Twenty-six. All right, so 26.5 puts you at 200. Let me go a little higher. Let's go to 30 volts. They say the maximum input for this unit is 30 volts. I wish it was higher because if it was higher, you'd be able to use two 12 volt panels in series or a 24 volt panel. So 26.56, let's go a little higher. 27.5. And it appears, let's see something here. I'm going to 30. All right, going up is not going up is not making any difference. It is actually capped off at 200. So let's go back. Let's see what level is required for 200 to maintain. That's 26. Twenty-six volts. Twenty-six point five puts you at 200. Before we take this outside, I just want to take a look at the accuracy for this meter on the output. 
Okay, so it's off by about 15 watts. According to the manufacturer, 1100 watts, you could supply it for up to three minutes. I have a toaster oven and I have the spotlight. The two together are right at 1100 or just a hair under. I'm going to use my cell phone as a stopwatch. So let's get the test going. Hopefully you can see that the power station shows 1097 and then the meter that the toasters plugged into shows just under a thousand. It ran for three minutes and 20 seconds that exceeded by 20 seconds with the manufacturer stated. Okay. The next thing I want to do is make sure that the unit can be overloaded without damage. So let's start off with the hair dryer first, then we'll try an inductive load like the larger circular saw. Now high heat. Okay. And it's hard for you to see on camera with the glare, but there's an exclamation point in a triangle right here that's indicating it was overloaded. So let's turn it off, turn it back on, and this should, yep, work just fine again. Now let's try the inductive load. You ready? Okay. Let's turn it off. Turn it back on. Make sure it's working fine, that it wasn't damaged. Okay, so overload protection definitely works. Now the power station is only rated up to 1,000 watts continuous, which we're going to test in a little while. But you're only going to be able to use certain power tools, such as a power drill or a mini circular saw. You could use a jigsaw, palm sander. So I'm going to take this mini circular saw. It has a 6.5 amp rating. I'm going to power it up and see if we can cut through the 2x6. Should cut just fine. Not a problem. Now let's test out the Milwaukee Sawzall. Earlier in the video, I took out my power supply unit to give you different voltages to show you how many watts the portable power station will charge at. So right here, we're just going to check. I have two 100 watt HQST monocrystalline solar panels in parallel. That gives us 200 watts and the output is right around 20 volts open circuit. You can see right here, the solar intensity is right around 78,600 lux. And with the panels pointed directly at the sun, you can see that I was right. You're not going to be getting 200 watts from these panels. We're only getting around 122, and that's just like other portable power stations that I've tested in the past, including the Jackery. If you're going to wanna to have the maximum output from these two panels, which will be 200, you're going to have to buy the inexpensive DC to DC step-up converter, that I showed you in a previous video. Okay, we're now going to keep 1,000 watts or just a little under on the portable power station to see how long it runs. Hopefully the power station can keep supplying power until the battery in the power station has been depleted. Okay, the power station's battery is almost fully depleted. It has not turned off. It was able to handle that load the entire time. And the most interesting thing is the voltage. The AC output voltage, I think it stayed, let's see, yep. It stayed very consistent around 111 volts. And as you see, it just finished, 0%. Everything was very good. Let's take a look at how long it ran. This portable power station was able to supply just a hair under 1,000 watts for 45 minutes straight. 
If you do the math, that means the battery capacity is right around 750 watt hours. More than likely, if we use a 500 watt discharge continuously, you would probably end up with a battery capacity in watt hours much closer to the 992 that the manufacturer states. All right, this is up to 12%. I have a halogen lamp right over there. I'm just gonna cover it a little bit so it doesn't blind the camera. I'm gonna plug this in and you'll see the voltage under load. 12.9, so there is regulation on this receptacle even when the battery pack is drained all the way down. Guys, I gotta say, this unit here tested extremely well compared to the other ones I've checked in the past. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.